This is the SVS SB3000 subwoofer, and some people claim that it's one of the best you can get for under $1,000. Well, in today's video, we're going to find out for ourselves just how much performance you can really get out of this sub. And just to take it one step further, we're going to be adding a second SB3000 into the mix just to see if two subs are actually better than one. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then stick around and we'll get into it right after the intro. All right, so right out of the gate, the SB3000 is one of SVS's most popular subwoofers, and for good reason. We've reviewed a few other SVS subwoofers and speakers in the past, like the PB16 Ultra and the SB1000, and if you want to see some of those reviews, we'll be sure to leave links down in the description. Obviously, this sub is part of SVS's SB line, meaning the box itself is a sealed design. That said, it's also pretty compact, measuring in at 15.6 inches tall by 15.2 inches wide and 17.8 inches deep. And it weighs about 55 pounds or 25 kilograms. Like many of SVS's other subs, this cabinet is built out of MDF, features lots of internal bracing, and the front baffle is twice as thick as the rest of the box, making for a very inert and structurally sound cabinet. As you can probably tell, this subwoofer has the piano gloss black finish, which I personally love. It can be a bit of a fingerprint magnet, and it does cost $100 extra, but to me, it's worth it for the looks. If you don't like the gloss black, this sub is also available in the premium black ash, which will save you $100 at $999. On the inside, the SB3000 is built around SVS's own 13-inch aluminum cone driver with a nice and thick parabolic rubber surround. It has a very rigid cast aluminum basket and dual ferrite magnets on the back to provide as much control as possible down to its rated frequency response of 18 to 270 hertz. All of that brings the total weight of the driver to just under 25 pounds, which is really impressive for a driver of this size. One of the biggest changes SVS has made to their driver design in the SB3000 is the flat edge wound split voice coil. This actually improves the efficiency of the subwoofer by making sure the voice coil is always surrounded with a strong magnetic field even when hitting very high levels of excursion. Powering this driver is the Sledge STA800D2 amplifier which SVS also includes in the 3000 Micro as well as the PB3000. This amp is capable of delivering at least 800 watts of power and over 2500 watts of peak power. And like other SVS subwoofers, the SB3000 uses a Class D amplifier topology. And of course, this subwoofer also includes everything you'd expect from an SVS sub, like built-in DSP and app control, which we'll talk more about in a minute. To control all of this power, SVS gives you a couple different options, the first of which is on the back of the subwoofer. This control panel, which SVS calls the Intelligent Control Interface, makes it pretty easy to change things like volume, phase, and even low-pass filter of the sub very accurately. But if you want to use other features of the DSP, like the built-in three-point equalizer, you'll need to use the SVS subwoofer app. We've covered this app extensively in our previous review of the PB16 Ultra, but to keep it short, it's a great way to easily control pretty much every aspect of the SVS subwoofer, like parametric EQ, phase, polarity, room gain compensation, and a lot more. Around the back of the SB3000, you'll find a USB port for the SVS SoundPath wireless audio adapter, which will actually let you use the SB3000 wirelessly. Along with the intelligent control interface, some RCA inputs and outputs, a 3 to 12 volt trigger input port, and finally a power switch and AC input port. I also just want to quickly mention that this subwoofer comes with a pretty nice steel grill which goes on pretty tight, so you shouldn't have to worry about it rattling off the front while you're watching a movie. With all of that said, it was time to set up this subwoofer and to make sure that we got a good idea how this sub worked in a variety of different setups, we decided to pair it with a few different speakers in a couple of different rooms. 
Of course, we tested them out with the SVS Prime bookshelf and center channel speakers, as well as the Aperion Audio Nova speakers, and even some RSL CG25 speakers, just to see how they would pair and blend together. All of these tests were done in our open concept living room theater, which definitely isn't an ideal layout, but this allowed us to see how the SP3000 performed in a more typical setup. Now, of course, we had to try the subwoofer out upstairs in our main acoustically treated home theater paired with our Vandersteen speakers. In both rooms, we listened to the subwoofer as they were configured straight out of the box. We then took measurements and applied EQ to get as flat of a frequency response as possible. And that leads us into one of the most important aspects of this subwoofer, which is the setup. The built-in DSP allows you to make lots of different changes to the subwoofer in order to get the best sound possible. So we highly recommend taking the extra time to make sure that it's set up properly for your room. Once we had the SB3000 set up for our room, it was time to start our listening tests. We started out with movies as we feel that's what most people will be using for this sub, but that's not to say that it's not good for music, and we'll get into that in a bit. Now with movies, this subwoofer is actually pretty amazing. In Fury, which is one of our favorite movies to demo, the sound of the tank shells and anti-tank guns were very tight and impactful and seemed to decay in a very natural way. Despite the fact that this is a sealed sub, it doesn't lack super low output. And that became pretty evident as we listened to some more movies. Another scene that we love testing out is near the beginning of Love and Monsters, which has some very deep room shaking bass and the SB3000 didn't disappoint. For such a compact sub, the SB3000 managed to fill even my big open concept living room with some very impactful bass that was never distracting, muddy, or boomy. Better yet, after EQing the sub for our room, the sub sounded even tighter and the bass was more refined and detailed. Of course, we tried several other movies and throughout all of them, the SB3000 held its own, producing some really good, tight, clean bass with quite a lot of output considering its size. Moving over to music, the biggest thing we noticed was how fast the subwoofer is. Obviously, being a sealed sub, it's gonna have better transient response than a ported sub, but that's not the only thing you have to consider. The best part of the SB3000 for music, in our opinion, is how well it matched pretty much any pair of speakers that we tested it with. It managed to integrate well with both bookshelf and tower speakers, and rather than just sounding like a subwoofer that's separate from the speakers, the SP3000 blended really well with the speakers, which almost gave us the impression that our speakers were actually producing those very low frequencies. No matter where we set up the SP3000 and what speakers we used with it, it always offered some pretty amazing bass, and we feel like a lot of this is thanks to the quality of the 13-inch driver SVS used in this sub, and the amount of power it can get from its built-in amplifier. Of course, there are some things that you'll have to keep in mind. As impressive as this sub is, it still has the same problems as all other single subwoofers, the biggest of which is uneven room dispersion. This is basically where acoustic peaks and knolls are created in your room, and the amount of bass you hear can actually change depending on where you sit. There are a variety of different factors that could impact this, like the shape and size of your room, where you place the subwoofer and more, but EQing the sub at the listening position and just finding the best spot for the sub in your room can help a lot. Of course, another option to pressurize your room more evenly is to get another sub, and that's exactly what we did. With both SB3000 set up, we went ahead and ran some new EQ on the whole system and tested it out. And just as a side note here, 
this isn't how we test the subs normally. We just stacked them together so we could show you an excursion demo. The first thing we noticed was the pretty substantial increase in bass output. In fact, the bass was more tactile and we could literally feel it pressurizing the room a lot more. After watching many of the same movies, we noticed a much more even bass response around the whole space that seemed to be just as tight and clean. It's pretty much like having an even bigger subwoofer without the drawbacks of a single, bigger, heavier driver. Now, does it sound twice as good or twice as loud? Well, no, but the bass is way more impactful. These subwoofers slammed hard without ever straining while still holding on to their very precise, articulate, and effortless presentation. This massive increase in output, though, does bring up our next point. Could two subwoofers actually be overkill? Well, this depends. For example, our home theater room is just 15 by 24 feet with eight foot ceilings, and that's what we'd consider to be about a medium sized room. And we preferred turning down the bass just a bit in this room as it gave us more headroom while still offering tons of output. And it never sounded like our speakers were being drowned out by the SB3000s. Of course, your personal preferences will come into play here as well. But if you want to crank them as loud as they'll go, just be ready for some serious house shaking bass. In the end, we absolutely recommend using dual subs with movies. Running both subs with music, we didn't have to turn them up as loud to get the sound that we really liked. But as we turned them up though, we actually didn't like the amount of bass that we were getting. It was just a little much for our personal tastes and the kind of music that we like listening to. This is an extremely subjective topic. But for us, if we were only worried about listening to music, we'd probably opt for just a single subwoofer and find the perfect placement and EQ for our room. With all that said, listening to both movies and music with both the SVS SB3000 was very enjoyable. I've always preferred sealed subs, whether it be for music or home theater, and our experience with this subwoofer just reinforces my thoughts. In the end, judging by what we've heard, this subwoofer is geared more towards home theater than it is for music, and I think that's what SVS intended it to be used for. While music still sounds great, I do think there are subs out there that may be better for music, but they may not be as good for movies, and they might not be able to match the price point of the SB3000 either. So if you're looking for a sub that does home theater exceptionally well, and is also very respectable with music, you should definitely consider the SVS SB3000. I can honestly say that it's one of the best subwoofers I've heard at the $1,000 price point, and I like them so much that I went ahead and purchased them from SVS, and I'll be adding them to my dedicated home theater room. And with that, I think that's gonna wrap up this video. We wanna give a big thanks to SVS for giving us the opportunity to review the SB3000 subwoofers, and we really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you wanna check out the SB3000 on SVS's website, We'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below. Please let us know if you have any questions or comments on the SVS SB3000, and we'll do our best to help you out. If you want to talk more about home theater, technology, or anything else related to those topics, we now have a Discord server, which you can find a link to in the description below, so go ahead and check that out. If you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content, and as always, have an awesome day.